Okay, I am back. Uh, coffee is in hand. Let's go to grain.hpp. Um, let's go ahead and change a few things here. Um, I'm going to move position up here. And instead of duration, we're going to have center duration. Instead of amplitude, center amplitude. And instead of speed. Okay, so what do I mean by center? Um, so we're adding a bit of stochasticity. So we need to know where the average or the mean is going to be. So if the duration is set to 200, but it can be plus or minus 20, we need to know that the center is 200 and it can be up to 220 down to 180. So when we're setting duration, we're actually setting the center, we're not setting uh, an exact number. So this is more clear and now we'll have errors if we don't update this. So center amplitude, center speed, center duration. All right. Like I said before, uh, we'll have to have getters. Uh, I'm still going to follow uh, standard guidelines and make getters and setters instead of just making these uh, public, which wouldn't be well. It's not. It's not procedure, I guess. Uh, I don't think it would hurt. I think it would work fine. But I will follow the elders' rules. All right. So void set center duration. new duration okay and then we'll just set um, center duration to new duration and we'll just do this for each one Okay, and um, we are, if we go back to our original sheet here, we're not actually using any of these to con directly control the speed. So yeah, we don't need a center speed. We did not need to do that. Um, we will have a variable to control how, how far away from one it will be. But uh, all right, so we'll change this back. and change it in the CPP. Okay, so this, let's go ahead and run it, make sure we didn't muck anything up. Ha, we have, um, good. Ah. Okay, we'll do this for now. We'll have to adjust that in a moment though. Okay, great. Um, so let's move here, go to our update function, and we'll set these values here. Um, let's see, it'll be um, yeah. We'll have to set that for each individual grain slot. So for I'm just going to copy the loop. Actually, we you know what we can just do it in here. 
Um, so for every grain, we'll set uh, center to whatever the slider has. So scrolling up, amplitude is first. Let's set uh, grains at I. Uh, set center amplitude to amplitude, which is the name of the slider. Grains at I set center duration to duration. And I think that is it for now. Let's go ahead and run that and see if this changes. So note that this will only change or should only change. Oh, that's an issue, isn't it? It should only change the grain at the beginning. Once the grain has been enacted, uh, none of those parameters change. Those parameters stick through the life of the grain. Um, so let's go ahead and make that true. I think we set ourselves up for failure here. Yes. So we get clicks and pops by changing this at midlife of the grain. Um, let's just go ahead and go a step further. So there's the center duration, the center amplitude. There's still going to be a chosen duration at some point and uh, a chosen amplitude. Let's keep these together. And there will also be float a duration spread amount, but we'll get to that later. Okay. Um, all right, so we need to choose those values. Center. All right, so this will just, it seems like we're going backwards here. Um, uh, this, this seems like a tedious extra step, but we'll need this later. Amplitude equals center amplitude. And eventually, it'll be a uh, center amplitude plus some random element. Um, and the size of that random element will be determined by the openness of the hand at eventually. But right now, we'll just set it equal. Um, the duration, same case here, duration equals center duration. And we'll have to make sure that this is amplitude. And I had a feeling that we used something else. Ah, so this will be the chosen duration. Let's, okay. So now our sliders should uh, effectively uh, change the way the grains are emitted. Hmm, did I get rid of speed? Ah, no, I didn't. <laughs> Classic. Oh, of course, I have for... Wait, no, we... Hmm, that's interesting. Um... Yeah, the sliders changed nothing. Let's go back here in the update function for every grain set center amplitude to amplitude. Okay. So it's definitely getting here. So the center amplitude is meaning what it means. So center amplitude. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, We don't need to do this. We were overriding our chain, so it didn't make a difference. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is just a global amplitude value. We still have the, uh, the randomness. Oh, no, we don't, but we will have that again. So every grain is the same amplitude now. So what I like to do is make the grains very short and make a lot of them. 
in this kind of like liquidy kind of sound. And the beauty of working in C++ is that we do get that uh, the nice sample accurate timing. You can kind of hear the, um, this frequency, the fundamental frequency of the emission. You can kind of hear that come through even though the uh, grains are being filled with this sound file. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's think of a way to go from hand openness to affect the parameters that we want to affect. So we'll have a, let's see, we'll have a value in, within the grain uh, called float left hand spread and right hand spread. Make setters here, void set left hand spread, float new spread. Same thing for the other hand. Okay, let's go to the this function uh, and the update function and just make sure that value gets pushed in. Grains at I set left hand spread to left open set right hand spread right open name of the slider okay and I think I might actually end up leaving the sliders there even when we're done that way if you're following along and you don't have a leap motion which I can't imagine everyone has one lying around um, you can still follow the tutorial, make the synth, and just don't have the gestural control, which is the last thing we'll add. So you can just stop. I'll, I'll post that as the last video, I believe, in this, um, this mini-series. And you can just have the synth. Um, and maybe uh, I'll have a, eventually I'll have a MIDI tutorial, and you can just uh, make those controllable video, via a MIDI controller or anything else. Okay, so that looks like it should be fine. Um, hasn't turned green yet. Let's move on. Um, so the left hand randomness is going to change how it uh, indexes through the sound. And we don't really have that in place yet. Uh, we'll add that in a little bit. But the right hand openness will change um, the range of the randomness of the amplitude, the range of the randomness of the duration. Um, so let's go ahead and we can add that now. Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to, uh, the best way to, do, an easy, I think the easiest way to do this is to um, multiply the current value by a percentage. It can be 80% to 120%, let's say, 50% um, to 150 if it's more varied. So I think, yeah, I think that's the way to handle it. That way we don't have to worry about, um, hmm. And we'll, we'll clip the value, so if it amplitude's above one, we'll just clip it at one. Uh, if the duration's above a, a ridiculous time, we can clip it there. If it's below um, zero, obviously, we don't want that. I'm not sure what arrows we'll get come into, but uh, we'll clip it at uh, a minimum time limit. All right, so let's do that. So we get the value uh, right-hand spread. That will be zero to one. So let's go here. So our Amplitude equals, or center amplitude plus, all right, so this will be center amplitude times hmm. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, no, let's get rid of that. Center or amplitude. Amplitude will equal center amplitude times one plus of rand of random. Um, negative left. And spread to positive or left hand spread. All right, so if our left hand spread is 10, or sorry, 0.1, um, that'll be this will make a random value between uh, negative 0.1 and 0.1. Um, Sure. All right, and we could just add or subtract this uh, from here, which is what we'll do actually. It's the same value, so we can save the calculation. All right, so now we should get a range. So this, I'm trying to think uh, if this will destroy anything. Um, no, it should be fine. Maybe we should scale it back. Like make it less, but let's let's go ahead and go with that. Um, if, if the ampli center amplitude is one, then it's never going to go above one. This will clip. It. Oh, uh, we'll use Open Frameworks function to uh, the clamp the value uh, between clamp from zero to one. All right, so that makes it a little safer. And let's do the same thing with duration. Um, I will copy and paste. And let's not do the same thing with duration. Um, this will be times, this will be what we had before. One plus of random. Oh, this, this should be right hand spread. Negative right hand spread to positive right hand spread. All right, so if the duration is 500, um, it will be multiplied by, let's say the spread is uh, 0.2. It'll be multiplied by 0.8, and making it a shorter duration, or multiplied by 1.2, making it a longer duration. And the, the distance will be tied to the, the center duration. So the amount of change will be tied to the original value. So you'll get smaller amounts of change if the duration was shorter, which makes sense. You don't want to just make that a linear uh, relationship because if you add 100 milliseconds to a sound, um, adding 100 milliseconds means a lot if it was a five millisecond sound, but it means very little if it was a, a thousand millisecond sound to begin with. So this uh, keeps that correlation intact. Um, right, so let's see what we have here. Let me make sure you guys are hearing this. You guys and girls, uh, let's see. Yeah, great. All right, so the amplitude is very low. If, if we increase the randomness, we'll catch some. So the vo volume is consistently at one or point one two five. But if we open the right hand. Let's just or test the duration. We'll open the right hand.
not uh it's it's kind of oh sorry this back uh it's not quite a, you know it's not by definition a chaos but it's kind of becomes more chaotic uh perceptually if you open your hand so i think that will be a very clear visual cue um and closing your hand you're kind of tightening your your grip on the controls you see it's a it's aesthetic yeah it's really deep it's, it's great um <laughs> uh, it's getting late it's already zero o'clock um okay so that is taken care of. One thing I would like to add uh, for the right hand openness is the emission uh, synchronicity. So let's, uh, if the hand's tightly closed, uh, let's make a synchronous stream of grains. If your hand's open, just add some, uh, some, a little bit of chaos. So, hmm. I think the parameters actually work fairly perfectly with this. Um, we're already setting the frequency of the impulses. Impulse uh, set uh, burst masking, and we'll do um, right hand. Oh, whoops! Right open. This the slider is called right open. Open times 0 0.5. So I don't want 100% burst masking. Actually, let's do yeah 0 0.5 is fine. So we'll just knock out some of the grains, which will make it seem uh, less synchronous or less periodic. Well, definitely less periodic. And impulse, uh, this is the most important one. Set, um, I'm forgetting the word, pulse deviation. And this is zero to one, so that's what I, I want. So right open. All right, so now it should be even more chaotic as the right hand opens. So now we don't have a continuous stream of grains. We have this kind of sputtering. Um, no sense of a distinct rhythm, just kind of like a, a throbbing of pulses. So that's where it needs to be for when we actually attach the hand to those parameters. I'm, I'm, let me go ahead and check if we're missing anything. Right hand, um, duration, emission rate, amplitude, openness. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so the openness was going to also control the speed. Um, so let's do that. So we find speed. Right now it's just random. Let's see, how is I going to do this? Um, the speed will now be one all the time. We'll start there. So it's be the original speed of the sound file. As the hand opens, it can uh, vary more and more. So let's go ahead and actually curve these values. Let's not be lazy. Um, so speed is a little funny, you know, uh, if you play the sound file at uh, half speed, you've down an octave. So that's a change of 0 0.5. If you play it twice the speed, you're uh, up an octave. But that's a change of 1. So there's a relationship there that we need to keep intact. Um, fortunately, it's not hard just to make a float temp. I'll, I usually call this octave. Let's just keep that going. It's not, I mean, yeah, sure. It's, it's, I'll say that's correct. Um, and. Um, this value will be of random. Let's see, we can go down two or up two or anywhere in between. So negative two to two. All right, so whatever value we get there, and we'll take that times our right hand spread. So if our spread is zero, our, our octave will be zero and our speed will be the power of two to the octave power. So, if you're uh, if you know if you're hip, hip to the 
uh, the power functions, you'll know that two to the power of zero is one. So that's normal speed. Two to the power of uh, one is two, so that's twice the speed. Two to the power of two is four, so that's two octaves higher. And let's go backwards. So uh, two to the power of negative one is 0 0.5, so that's down an octave. Two to the power of negative two is down two octaves, which is uh, uh, 0.25. So great, um, uh, that should work fine. No, uh, we're not getting uh, speed changes here. Um, there is uh, some fluctuation in the original audio file, but as we open the hand, So one thing to note with a granular synthesis initiative you run into is you can't store and represent a low frequency sound in uh, a, a tiny grain. You just can't fit the waveform in there. Um, so I think it would be uh, maybe behoove us a bit to kind of bias our octave. We maybe only go down half or one octave and maybe up th potentially three octaves. Um, is a uh, yeah so I mean it's kind of a waste of a grain if the frequency is too low to be represented to do that processing and really have no sonic results um, you I'm not stating that you can't have low frequencies with granular synthesis or particle synthesis that you can but you can't uh, store that in a, under a window um, the, the way to achieve low frequency sound and with granular synthesis and particle synthesis is to uh, kind of use the window itself as the source uh, is technically a modifier uh, you're controlling the amplitude but the modifier comes so quickly in this method of synthesis that it itself is also a source so anyway let's go ahead and see if this uh, this bias helps the result Doing a, or here we're doing a proper distribution. It would be nice to also apply some Gaussian distribution on the uh, the octave as well. I'm not going to do that. That won't be worth the effort, I don't think. Um, but really on the amplitude, we're having some issues. So like the really loud ones just kind of pop at you, especially if they're loud and they're high frequency. They have a lot more spectral power and it's a little obnoxious. Let's see if there's a quick way we can adjust that. Um, the problem is if the overall volu volume is at zero, then let's see. If the overall volume is at zero, you can still have, and the right hand's all the way open, you can still have a full amplitude grain. Um, and that, that seems problematic. Um, let's find a solution quickly. I think we should have this the way it is, and then have a master um, use use the right hand vertical position as a master uh, volume control. As, I mean, this is a synthesizer. It'd be a little obnoxious if you can't make it not make sound. Um, that's an important part of music is silence. So let's make this happen. Um, let's see. Oh, well, one issue. <laughs> that was just a typo. That actually might have been the issue. Um, <laughs> the, ampl the amplitude could be uh, two in this. Um, 
which it would have, you know, would clip, but it's getting scaled down later. It's getting scaled by the window, and it's getting scaled in the audio thread um, and the uh, of app.cpp. Uh, but anyway, back to the issue. So the center amplitude, I'm trying to think of a way to do this without multiple controls. You know what, let's only go down. That'll, that, that will solve the problem. So if the center amplitude plus, right hand spread and button seven plus minus. Okay, so it, when the hand opens, the grains can only be quieter. That, that's a really quick way to solve this. And so we no longer, yeah, we, we do need to keep, keep that clamped. We don't want the amplitude to be below zero. So let's leave that. And let's see if this is more uh, palatable. Okay, great. So when your uh, right hand is, the, the amplitude is on the y-axis of the right hand. And when your hand's low, you can completely shut off the stream. Cool. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's a quick and easy way to uh, to curve that. So, that's, so, I mean, there's so many of those are just inaudible. Um, and that's again a waste of processing really um, so if we I'm trying to think if we square root the uh, is it zero to one so if we take square root of 0 0.5 it's, yeah, it's the opposite direction we want to go so that's uh, this shouldn't be hard why am I doing this um, one minus the square root hmm well, I'll get I'll get back to that. Right now, it's 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 feasible, or uh, it's it's sufficient. Um, and we are going to. We oh yeah the um the, stretch goal was to attach uh, synchronicity to tilt. Right now, synchronicity is on the openness of the hand. Uh, I think we'll leave it like that for now. I think synch the change in synchronicity is important to have a, a varied sound palette. Okay, so that's that's taken care of. Um, let's go ahead and run this. So we have the emission. Uh, emission will be controlled by the X position of the hand, amplitude by the Y position of the right hand, duration by the Z position of the right hand, and then openness will control all of those stochastic parameters. All right, so now we have to deal with the left hand issues. And this is kind of a novel. No, it's not completely novel. It's not, it's not the first time I've done it. Uh, hey, if you, uh, you know, want to check out DPG, it kind of does this kind of vectorization of the granularity, where um, which is what we're about to do, where you can pull from multiple sound files in different ways. Um, but yeah, so we need to add three more sound files and have the grain pull from a Y position. So what we'll do is add three more sound files when uh, we'll stack them here so we can see them visually. And I think the best way to have a representation is to actually have like a little circle here and move where the center index is. Um, so let's move on to this one. This is going to be a fairly challenging issue. Uh, right now we have uh, one sound. Um, you know what? I, this is working fine. I'm about to change a lot of things that will break. I'm definitely going to break it and hopefully be able to put it back together. But um, a habit I'm in, uh, the thing I'm in the habit of doing is if I feel like I'm about to break it, I go to the file. Just compress it, and then we have a safe preserved copy. This copy works. If I do something terrible, I can go back. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to need four total sound files. Um, let's be responsible and just make this array an array. So now sounds will be plural, and there will be four of them. So this is an array of sound files. A array of sound file pointers. Um, so in our setup, 
we're going to need an, a for loop for we could do this without it since there's only four lines but Uh, if we wanted it to be real, you know, slick, we could make this dynamic so you could have as many sound files as you want. And uh, but uh, I think four feels right to me. Um, you only have so much control when you're waving your hand around a leap motion. Navigating through four sound files seems fine. So for every uh, sound, we new sounds at i equal new sound file to data. Hmm. Actually, you know what? These will each have unique names. So, no for loop. We will do these manually. Um, all right, now our first sound is the way it used to be. One, two, three. Okay. So now they're all the same sound and we're loading the same sound four times, but let's, uh, let's keep that going. Oh, we'll have to, uh, change the way our grain file is structured. So it takes the entire array of pointers, uh, instead. So let's give it that sounds and we'll give it a pointer, uh, to the array and we'll adjust it here. So it wants that. Actually, I think that's correct. I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. Um, when we draw the sound file, we will now have to, um, we can do this in a for loop for i equals zero, i is less than four. sounds at i draw the x location will be the same the y location will be 20 plus um i times the height uh which is 120 and the width and height will be the same So now if, uh, hmm, I mean, this won't work, I don't think, but uh, I'm just going to see if this sticks because I think, I think that's right. Nope. Okay. So this file is not. Okay, so I mean, it won't behave differently, hopefully, but, uh, oh, it might. <laughs> okay, so you can see we have all four sound files loaded. Um, they're all identical, but they are in a neat block here. Um, great, so now we need four unique sound files. Let's get through this, uh, go to my things folder. Um. So we have a Tamberly variant sounds here. Low drone. Um, soft mallets. And sound one. Okay, so we just need to rename these. Um, I'll just do this arbitrarily. Sound two. And we'll have to note the file formats. 
We could just change them, but I won't do that. All right, so AIF wave, AIF wave alternating. No, oh, okay. Two. Give it a run and make sure we have four uh, discrete sound files. Ah. So you can see it did not load the fourth sound file. Um, perhaps I named it incorrectly. Hmm. Sound four dot wave. Sound four dot wave. Hmm. <laughs> that is not great. Um. That is absolutely bizarre. Okay, let's just try it again. Maybe it was a fluke. I doubt it, though. Okay, no. Um, I guess I'll just use a different one. Um, bolts multiple. Let's see what this is. Well, it kind of has a granularity to it, but um, not a distinct one, so we won't get it confused, I don't think. I think my averaging, um, I mean, there's a lot of quiet spots, so the averaging function might, uh, might not be, hmm, might be being weird. Let's actually just do a quick test, and uh, we're hearing this one, so let's see if this will produce sound. Yep, okay. Honestly, it's not the most interesting thing, but I think at this point, we can just leave it. <laughs> 